what is a functor? By the end of this episode, I hope that you have a good understanding of this very useful idea and how it relates to the real world. So my name is Eric Normand, and I help people thrive with functional programming. So functor is an interesting idea. It's a concept from category theory, and it is used often in languages like Haskell and Scala that where the communities do a lot of category theory stuff in their programs. So let's go over what it is. So just like some of the other um, uh, algebraic ideas uh, that we've gone over, like associativity, monoid, commutativity, those kinds of things, this functor is about operations over a certain type that the operation has a structure preserving property. Okay, we're going to go over what structure preserving means. Um, you'll often find that the operation is called map or fmap. Um, in Scala, the idea of functor is translated into mappable, I believe. Like so a mappable interface, right? A mappable, um, or what do they call them? Case class or something like that. I'm not a Scala person, so don't take my word for that. Um, so a good example that you're probably familiar with is mapping over a list. That is a functor. Map over a list is a functor. Okay, now what does that what does that mean? So let's use a metaphor. It's a metaphor. It's not a metaphor, but let's call it a metaphor for right now. Imagine that you are the manager of a factory, and in this factory you have an assembly line, and just to make it concrete, you're making uh, toy cars. Okay, and so in the car manufacturing process, there are steps that you have to follow in a certain order. And so you can lay out your assembly line to do those steps. But when you're doing factory management, you want to optimize the time it takes to make a car. Because the more cars you can make in a day, the cheaper they will be. Okay, you can service more customers. And so you can start to play around with things. So you see that there's a worker here on the one part of the assembly line, and they are adding the body of the car. Right? So there's a chassis, and they add the body. And then they pass that to a person who adds the wheels, and then they pass it to the next person. Maybe they pass it by hand or there's a conveyor belt or something, but um, regardless, person A adds the body and then person B adds the wheels. Now you could say, let's do an experiment. What if the same person adds the body and then the wheels? So you eliminate a person, right? You get rid of one person by combining these two jobs into one. Now the question is, you're doing this experiment to see if it's faster, if it's more efficient. It might be, it might not be. But you're assuming, that's a good assumption, but you're assuming that the car will still be made correctly. That this person who is adding a body and then the wheels is doing the same work as two people where the first person adds the body and the second person adds the wheels right it's the same work you're going to get the same car at the end that is the structure preserving property that somebody 
doing two t jobs in a row themselves is the same as two people doing the first job and the second job respectively. Okay, that's, that's all the structure preserving property is. Now, let's translate this into mapping over a list. Okay, so let's say you have a list of strings and you have two operations to do on these strings. First is you have to trim the white space off the front and the back. So basically calling dot trim. Okay. And then the second operation is to uppercase them. Very, very straightforward. So you can write a, a what we might call a pipeline. So you take the list of strings, then you map trim over that and then you map uppercase over that okay so the the string values will flow through two different operations one is trim next one uppercase now i could say well that's inefficient because you're making this intermediate list Right? The first map is making a totally new list or array or whatever it is in your language, but it's making a totally new list. And then that list is just thrown away right away after, after it gets passed to the second map. Right? So you, you've, you've made some waste. So because of the structure preserving property, you can do this. You can say, well, we're only going to do one map. We're going to make a new function for the map, right? You pass in a function to map. And this function is going to do both trim and uppercase. So it's going to take the S, the string, it's going to trim it and then uppercase it and then return it. And so you only run map one time. But we also believe just intuitively that this is going to give us the same answer at the end with less waste right? This is the structure preservation property. Okay. So more formally, I could say that map of F on map of G of some list is the same as map of F composed with G over the list. So that's function composition. We'll talk about that in another episode, but that's basically what we do. We make a new function that does both operations. That's that's structure preservation right there. So that's that's it. That's all it is. Now you could also extend it and say, well, there's the idea that if I map the identity over the identity function over a list, then I get that same list out. Okay, that's an important property. Now, what basically what you're saying is I have some neutral operation that does nothing to it. It shouldn't change anything. And this, as a metaphor, I like to look at this like in a factory. I can put my car or my partially built car on a conveyor belt. And that conveyor belt does nothing to the car except move it. Right? It does not change the car in any way. And so that is like a neutral step. And so I can add, uh, I can add conveyor belts between any two workers as, as much as I want, as long as those conveyor belts don't damage the car or change the car in some way, I can just put conveyor belts between things. That is part of the structure preservation. Now I said, that it's kind of like a metaphor. It's not really a metaphor. This is the structure preservation property that just exists naturally in an assembly line. That's why it works. That's one of the reasons why assembly lines are so powerful. You get the same car out at the end and you can manipulate how the work gets done and how small tasks you're making you know, I can give small tasks to all these people on the assembly line, or I can give bigger tasks to each person on the assembly line. But as long as the tasks happen in the same order, 
excuse me, I get the same answer. That's pretty cool. And so this is what uh, this is what functional programmers find cool about the structure preservation property uh, and and functors. So let's look at some uh, some other functors that you might not think of. So we've got lists. Lists are functors, or because uh, you can map. So map over lists is functors. Now you might um, have in your language an idea of a, a maybe value or an optional value. That is also a functor. And even if you don't have the idea, you might have something very much like it. So I know in JavaScript, in Python, in Clojure, we've got this value that represents no value. So nil or null or nothing or none. It has different names. And so kind of you could squint and say, well, all values in these languages are actually optional because they could be null, right? And it's, it's, it's well known that you get null pointer exceptions and stuff if you don't treat it like it's optional, if you don't check. So you can write an operation that's like map. It's going to have this structure preservation property that takes the value. It does the check. Is it null? If it is, it just returns null. If it's not, it calls a function on it that's passed in, right? So some, some function f that gets called on it. And it's going to have the same property. The same property that if I have a, uh, a value and I call f on it, and then I call g on, or uh, sorry, and I map f on it. That's a special map. It's like a maybe map, okay? So it's going to call maybe map with f on this value, and then I call maybe map with g on that value, it's the same as composing them with a single maybe map, right? So that's another common functor that, that you might have. Um, any collection could be a functor. Uh, in Clojure, we generally don't treat things like that. So like a set, we have map, over a set, but it kind of treats it like a sequence. So it picks some order to traverse the set in and maps over it that way. Uh, and, and then it returns a sequence. But you could have a map that's just for sets that takes a set and returns a set, right? Now you gotta make sure that whatever you do preserves that structure, structure preserving property, okay? Now, one way you could lose the structure preserving property is, you know, sets have this interesting, uh, interesting thing that they get rid of duplicates, right? So if you have a bunch of strings and you trim them, the there might you might lose some strings, like the count will go down because now you have you have duplicates because you trim them, they're now equal, and so what does that do, right? That might lose that property um, that of structure preservation, uh, but maybe not, right? Uh, it, really, it really depends on the operations and the values that you've got in those sets. Um, okay, so uh, that's functor. Uh, it's an operation over a type. Usually it's called map. That's why in Scala it's called mappable. Um, Map over a list is a functor. It, this property, like most category theory properties, it does show up in the real world, right? This is, this is what math is. It's descriptions of the real world. Sometimes they get really abstract, but they all derive from things we experience in the world. And, and that thing that is very common is factory work with an assembly line has this property of preserving the structure of the car or, or the structure, let's say the structure of the work is preserved, right? Even if you split the tasks up 
into smaller bits or you combine them together, you still have the same car being made in this assembly line. Okay, um, that's all I have. If you would like to see video, audio, or text versions of this episode, you can go to lispcast.com slash podcast. You can subscribe there. You can listen to other episodes. Um, you can find ways to contact me if you want to ask a question because I love answering questions on the podcast. I'd love to hear what do you think about this. If you're into this, um, give me feedback about you know the topics you want to listen to, the kinds of formats you want. It's all there. Um, yeah, I'll, I, I guess I'll see you later or you'll see me or one of those. You'll hear me, whatever. See you later.